and Michaela joins us now and it's lovely to see you. I'm so looking forward to finding talented dogs. I know, <laughs> I just bet you love, are. It? This, is, this is right up Simon Cowell Street, let <laughs> me tell you, he's going to love this. I mean, you remember, if we're talking being on telly a long time, do you remember Sausages? Do you remember oh, the yeah, that was Esther, Esther Ranson. Uh, yes. It's about 40 but this years isn't, ago. This isn't something. surely about dogs that can speak, is it? I mean, this is dogs... It's not about sausages. You never know what you're going to find, <laughs> So, tell so you. this is... It's all part of the National Pet Show, uh, and it's uh, London Excel, 7th and 8th of May, and uh, at the NEC in Birmingham, 5th and 6th of November. You've got a, a time to wait for that one. But what do you do at the pet show? Well, I'm doing the Super Dogs Live, which is basically looking for talented dogs, and there, there are three categories. So there's, um, there's strictly doggy dancing, so I'm hoping to see lots of sequins, because mm. you've got to have sequins, haven't you? Talented dogs, and I'm hoping that it'll just be something really unique and different. And um, heroic hounds. And they're the ones I really enjoy, because there are some dogs that are just so unbelievably heroic. Mm. I mean, you've probably heard about the dogs that can sniff out cancer yeah. and sniff out yeah. epileptic fits and all that sort of yeah, thing. You know, incredible that. skills that we still don't understand how they do it. Well, a a an underdog can win as well. I mean, it's not like some of the other shows where they've got to be over bred and perfect i mean this could be absolutely any dog absolutely not but i mean obviously that's a beautiful little poodle but you know i would actually love to see a real mongrel a scruffy mongrel with a bit of sequins on doing something groovy and you've got a dog haven't you would your dog ever uh, be any good at this oh there yeah, is your dog there's my dog and as you can see i'm a bit younger there and he's a bit younger now he's 16. Oh, he's, bless him. he's not his sight's nearly gone his hearing's nearly gone oh. and he bumps into everything he's absolutely gorgeous but he's in the twilight of his years okay oh. and is he oh, back home Home, obviously in South Africa. He is in South Africa. So Didn't you... bring him over. No, no, <laughs> Didn't I'm not think surprised. I was. <laughs> and you, um, you see, so you try, you commute really. I, I mean, didn't that's even realise that no, you've gone to live there. I went there 14 years yeah, ago. No I've been there a long time, yeah. So I, I come over and I, I do a you know solid amount of work, then I go home and I'm, I'm a mum and nobody knows who I am and I live a very different life and then I come so back here and do some work. So tell me about life in South Africa then. What, 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 what's what the was the draw, what's yeah. Happening? I bought a holiday home and then I met somebody. And so my holiday home, I remember somebody saying to me, well, why don't you just live over there and come here to work? I said, no, don't be stupid, that's not going to work. And then said, well, give it a go. So I gave it a go for six months and, you know, I made it work. And it's great. It's a, it's a lovely balance. I have a really, really great balance in my life at the moment. And I love being at home and being a mum. And then I love coming here and doing my work. It means I really enjoy it when I'm here. Yeah. We well, see a picture of your son. It's Ollie, isn't it? It's Ollie. Your, your son, Ollie. And does he have sort of that passion about wildlife that you have? I mean, being surrounded he, by it. He loves, he loves wildlife. I mean, that's us on a safari in South Africa. It's a holiday. I mean, we, it's not the sort of thing we do every weekend. No, of course. <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, he does love wildlife when we're on holiday, but his, his absolute passion is cricket. Ah. So look out for that name. His surname's Chevalier. OK. Only Chevalier, and he wants to play That's for the South African Proteas. That's a good, name. That, is a good yeah. name. that is a good name. Coming up to the crease now, it's Ollie Chevalier. <laughs> I know. But he is only 10, so who knows. But, you know, he's got quite a good spin bowl going on there. I, see, I don't know how you do it. Is it like that? Do you know anything about cricket? Yeah, don't you look at Certainly not like that, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, when you were... Obviously, when you're coming backwards and forwards, um, then, then one of the big flags you'll have is Spring Watch. That'll be coming up, won't Which it? Which is coming up on the 30th of May. We start that. We did a big press call for it yesterday. And... Um, any, I mean, you never really know what you're going to get. The surprise of last time was the stickleback fish. Spineless side, the stickleback fish was like Leicester City. <laughs> you know, nobody knew that it was going to be the star. And he, and because he didn't have all his spines. He, yeah, he was called Spineless Side because he was a three three spine stickleback, and he only had two. You can see him there. Bless him. Look at him. And um, you know, they they have to get a lot of red colour to attract females. And at the beginning, he wasn't colourful. He wasn't getting any females. His nest was trodden on by a duck, then an otter. Ah. It was a complete disaster. And funny enough, the one next to him was getting all the girls, and he was called Frisky Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Frisky Phil the stickleback. And did oh, Frisky Phil have three spines? Frisky Phil had three spines. He, he had a lovely there. rosy chest and getting all the females. He had a lovely nest. Anyway, by the end of the show, Spineless Side got his females. He got, you know, the little babies came Why, out. Why, is that because they saw Hit past Twitter. the fact that he, <laughs> he didn't oh, have... Said, no, he know, went the... off and he came back and he was looking resplendent. He must have been down the gym or something. <laughs> but, so no, seriously, he, he, was, he was the underdog and suddenly he rose up there and... I can't tell you how hysterical it was. He was the front page of newspapers, <laughs> people writing songs about him. It was brilliant. And how are you now? Because you've had your own, you know, sort of personal um, adventure. Um, yeah, two years ago I had breast cancer, which was, which was a huge shock. And it was a challenging year. There's no doubt about it. It was challenging. But 
I feel now, I'm two years on, I was 50 a couple of weeks ago, and I feel so blessed that I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm fit, mm -hmm. my life hasn't been compromised, and I, I'm feeling great. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it was a tough time, but I feel like I'm really lucky compared to a lot of people. It changes everything, and I imagine you approach your birthday in a very different way to maybe you would have done before this had happened. You're so right, because I think, you know, a lot of people when they get to 50, it's like, oh, God, yeah. I'm 50. Whereas I'm like, yay, I'm 50 and I'm feeling good. And you had a good party in South Africa? I did have a good party. In fact, it wasn't an outrageous party. I'm not a great drinker anymore. I, I, I don't like staying up that late anymore. I don't know what you do. Great like wine it. down there. What's the matter with you? <laughs> but we, we went to um, the Cedarburg Mountains and we hired out a place and 40 friends came up and we had two days of just um, you know being in the mountains walking swimming sounds just amazing. having a great time just quality time with people that I feel connected with. Oh, that sounds like that a, a delicate and it's it? really lovely to yeah, see it is. you. Well thank really you very much. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>